Hi friends, it's CC. I've been collecting Lilith's Pet Shop for over 15 years now, and as you can imagine, I know a lot about these toys. I also love archiving and learning about the history of things I'm really passionate about, so I love doing deep searches to find things that most people would never have known about. With that being said, I decided to devise a list of some of my most interesting LPS finds. I was actually writing a video about obscure LPS merch when I realized that prototypes made up the majority of the list. Prototypes have mystified the LPS community ever since they were discovered, and over the years many have been documented by LPS tubers and collectors alike. In this video, I want to shed light on this mysterious category of pets. This is by no means a complete list of LPS prototypes, but these are the ones that I was able to locate during my research. Finally, I'd like to give a huge thank you to the members of the CCR Television Discord server for posting pictures of many of the pets you'll find in this video. I've learned a ton about prototypes from you guys, and I sincerely appreciate your shared passion for Lilith's Pet Shop. I hope you enjoy this video because it took me hours to hunt these prototypes down, and along the way, I even made some of my own discoveries that are absolutely wild. Anyway, without further ado, let's start by defining what a prototype even is. A prototype is defined as an original model on which something is based on, the first example on which all later forms are developed. In the case of Littlest Pet Shop, these are the first designs of pets that are made before they're eventually fine-tuned and finalized into the toys found in stores. Please note that factory errors are not prototypes and therefore aren't included in this list as they are mistakes made during production that were never intended to end up on shelves. It's likely that most LPS have some sort of prototype design whether we know it or not because large businesses like Hasbro likely have to run these designs through several executives and test trials to make sure they're appealing to kids before they decide on the final product. There are quite possibly hundreds or even thousands of LPS toys that were created during this process that we'll never know about, but what's interesting is that many of these prototype designs have eventually been discovered. But how? Something that I and many others have found is that there are many instances of LPS pamphlets and back cards showing images of pets that look different from the ones that were actually released. This may be due to the packaging being created before the designs were finalized, or maybe the people in charge of designing them only had access to photos of the prototypes. Whatever the reason may be, there are a ton of these designs to be found. Probably the most well-known of these prototypes is the one for Dachshund 675, whose pamphlet shows her having a white snout that never ended up being released. This has led to many LPS fans creating this pet due to how iconic this pet is to the LPS community. Something that fascinates me is while this pet was eventually released as part of the Pet Train and Park set, on the pamphlet the prototype is shown as being part of the Cozy Campfire set. I don't know why this happened because she's shown as having the sportiest eye style while the other two have the cuddliest eyes, and this isn't a placement error because she's shown wearing the shoes from the camping set. However, something interesting is on the other side of the pamphlet they are completely mixed up in the wrong category. What even led to this? I think it's really funny that Hasbro ended up releasing such a huge error because 675 ended up becoming one of the most sought after pet by collectors. Another interesting note on this image, it also contains prototypes of Deer 670 and Bulldog 668. In fact, the entire playset in this image contains prototypes as they're shown as having the hungriest eye style but were released with the littlest eye style. This mistake too can also be seen on the back of the pamphlet. Speaking of this set, a scan of another pamphlet shows prototypes of Shorthair 852 and Monkey 853, which were actually released as hungriest pets, with completely different molds. I know Hasbro couldn't have predicted the popularity of the Big Five molds, but I have a feeling that this pet wouldn't have been as sought after if they went with this original design. Box art of this black and white short hair cat was spotted by a member of LPS Amino on the packaging of the Pet Loving Showcase, and later a physical version very similar to this design was found on a pamphlet. It's likely a prototype of short hair 336 who was released with less airbrushing and no white tipped ear. The pamphlet version of this pet also depicts white on the paws and tail. Considering only three black short hair cats were ever released, I do kind of wish this one was added to the mix. The Pet Love and Showcase also contains prototype versions of Rabbit 18 and Kitten 114, which is interesting considering this set and many of the pets shown on the packaging were released in 2007, and these pets were released much earlier. Speaking of early releases, this poster, which was circulated at the beginning of Generation 2, has a pretty interesting prototype. Can you guess who? I'll give you three seconds. If you guessed Kali 67, you'd be correct. In this poster, as well as an early pamphlet, this collie is shown with its paw up. It can even be spotted in this commercial from 2005. 
Collie's 58 and 237 are the only ones that were released with their paws up, so it's likely that Hasbro intended for this to be the only Collie mold, but somewhere along the line they decided to stick with the paw down versions that LPS collectors know today. Unreleased versions of early pets can also be found in the LPS handbooks. For instance, this spider is shown with what looks like a molded tooth, and I'm honestly sad that we didn't get to see this. Many of these prototypes are simple variations in the airbrushing that aren't found in their final releases, including the very first LPS. Shout out to this Maltese, you look derpy. Also, this godforsaken mouse has a prototype too. It's shown here as having completely different eye makeup. Box art is another awesome way to spot prototypes. Just a few weeks ago, I posted this video and discovered a prototype of the homophobic chihuahua. If you know, you know. If you don't, you won't. I also spotted variations in the extreme pets, such as the poncho on the grooviest goat being different from the one that was released, and the colors and eye details being ever so slightly different on the grooviest dog. I don't know what made Hasbro decide to make such minute changes, but stuff like this can be found everywhere on LPS packaging. There's definitely plenty I've missed. <coughs> Hey guys, it's Editing CC. Um, I got bored earlier and I went and looked at nibs on eBay and ended up discovering a whole bunch more prototypes. I'm honestly in shock that Hasbro ended up doing this so much, especially during the early stages of LPS. Like at some point this has to be some sort of false advertising. So yeah, if you're ever bored, like just go to eBay and look up nibs. You might end up just discovering a bunch of prototypes. Guys, did you know that Brooke, the Brooke Hayes, was almost released as a kitten? I almost missed this in my research, but it's true. In this pamphlet, the Race About Ranch, which is the set that LPS 339 originally came with, is shown with the kitten instead of the short hair that was eventually released. A member of my Discord server posted an even better look of this prototype in this weird LPS card thing. I have no idea where this came from or if this card isn't even official, but the image of Baby Brook certainly checks out. Here is yet another short hair prototype. Yeah, there are a lot of these. This one of short hair 138 is seen in this pamphlet with very different airbrushing on the face. Okay, one more, kinda. Well, actually, yeah, this one's a grand journey that started with one prototype and ended with another of a short hair cat. Sugar Diamond accidentally shared with us this prototype in her video reacting to LPS trading cards. Watch it, by the way, it's hilarious. When I was researching this era of LPS, I didn't see this at all, so I was like, what? At first glance, it seems pretty obvious that this will be a prototype of short hair number five, but it's not. That's right, people, I'm going to debunk this for you. I actually found this exact pet in my copy of the third official LPS handbook, which documents pets 161 through 240. Interestingly, the only pet released in this mold during that time was Kitten 224, who I can only think of as Trinity from Strange Happenings. Anyway, while its placement in this list isn't very intuitive, as you can see it wasn't very close to the other two pets that one came with, the actual design of 224 is nowhere to be found, so I strongly believe this is a prototype of that pet, even though the designs look nothing alike. But wait! Oh my god, there's more. I have debunked a mystery that nobody was even thinking about. When I did my first run through of the handbooks, I saw this short hair cat. She looked kind of weird, but I wrote her off as short hair 410, the extremely rare and expensive Toys R Us exclusive pet, right? Wrong! There's just no way. It's nowhere near the range of this handbook. The only pet I could connect this with was the variant short hair 228. To confirm my theory, I took a look at the set it came with, then I took a look at the list on the back of the book, and wouldn't you know, that damn cat is right next to the pets that this release short hair originally came with. <gasps> I'm sorry. It's just that I nearly missed this one, and considering there are seven other short hair prototypes on this list, the fact that I just so happened to find another... <sighs> I almost needed to be sent to the emergency room. Anyway, back to the video. Another well-known prototype is Great Dane 636, who appears in pamphlets and commercials as having no flocking and extra brown paint on its face. Like the prototype of 675, there are also a lot of customs made after this one. Destiny Cat 626 can be seen in this pamphlet as having a short hair head. Since she was the first Destiny Cat to be released, this may be the result of Hasbro testing out the mold before designing the head. A prototype of Angelfish number 643 can be seen here without its mouth markings. This kangaroo has prototype 
Gloves? Does that count? There are several prototypes of sticker eye pets shown on this pamphlet documented by Baby Tappy, who actually has a ton of content on Lilith's pet shop packaging. The one I find the most interesting is Hamster1349, who was released with two variants. The prototype looks like they were testing one of each eye. Here are a couple more photos of sticker eye prototypes I could find. I'm sure there's lots more to discover. This prototype of the special edition lion has very different colors from the one that was eventually released, and the special edition snake is shown without its shimmery colors in this pamphlet. The huskies from the Cozy Care Adoption Center appear as prototypes in this pamphlet. The adult husky's only difference is the placement of its eyelashes, but the puppy has completely different markings on its face. Which one do you guys prefer? Amazingly, a prototype of Short Hair Cat 1120 can be seen in its original packaging. This image was found on LPS merch and is likely a stock photo from Hasbro rather than a set that was actually released. There are a few images out there of this prototype in people's collection, but right now I can't confirm whether they're real or custom, so I'm putting a big question mark on that for now. Corgi1864 appears in pamphlets as being cream colored instead of brown and doesn't include the freckles that can be seen in the final version. On the back of Kitten 2037's packaging, a prototype can be seen in a different mold. This head type was only used in early kittens that also came with hair, so it's interesting to see that Hasbro is still playing around with this mold years later. I'm sorry guys, not even the walkables are immune. In this commercial, you'll find a prototype of the walkable dachshund 2163 sporting completely different markings. Here are some more prototype pets that were spotted in commercials. Thanks Jules LPS for spotting these. My absolute favorite, the polar bear with heterochromia. Believe it or not, this prototype of Deer 2113 has sparked quite a bit of controversy. You may have seen pictures of these pets floating around from LPS Hanna. It was long believed that they were prototypes until French LPS collector Zelia Pet Shop looked into them further. This image of the prototype deer was taken at a Hasbro toy fair and is, to my knowledge, the only confirmed image of any of these pets. Zelia noticed that this pet didn't have the flower painted on, and when she contacted Hasbro about it, they confirmed that Hannah's deer was a fake. There's no documentation at all of the other two pets, so they're assumed to be fake as well. With that being said, this deer is in fact a confirmed prototype, and a super cool one at that. To finish off this section of the video is one of the most interesting prototypes I have ever seen. Here we have test packaging for what would later become part of the cutest pets line. While this set was eventually released with this fluffy zebra, we could have gotten this short hair cat with a tiger pattern and fuzzy ears. Why Hasbro? Her paint job might be the quality of a fake LPS, but she's so cute. <sighs> Sorry, I had to mourn the loss of this one for a second. Also, for you creepypasta nerds out there, this prototype packaging lists both pets as number 0000. zero, zero, zero. Ooh, spooky. Wait, what's happening? All of the prototypes I've shared so far have been of pets that never released to the general public, and to my knowledge, not even the most hardcore collectors own any of these. But there's actually a special category of pseudo prototypes that have somehow made it into the hands of collectors. I say pseudo because many of these are in fact mystery pets. In order to be a confirmed prototype, there must be some official documentation or statement made by Hasbro, but these pets don't have that. I decided to include them on the list anyway because if I didn't, there would probably be a lot of comments asking about them. Just be aware. Anyway, here are authentic mystery pets documented by Toy Sisters, who bought these during the original production of Generation 2 before fakes were created. As you can see, some of these pets have likely end designs, but most have no identifiable counterpart and are special cases in themselves. Fun fact, my good friend Howling Wolf 13 owns a prototype of this bull terrier, and I got to kiss him at LPS Con. Some of you may recognize this mystery chinchilla who has been spotted with and without its tail for quite a few years now. This, along with a few other pets I mentioned earlier, are actually the easiest mystery pets to get your hands on and go for cheap too. I'll leave a link to the Persian cat below. Finally, here are a bunch of pictures of all the rest of the mystery pets I was able to find documentation on. As you can see, a few have likely released counterparts, while others are a complete mystery as to where they came from. So there you have it, an exhausting but non-exhaustive list of the incredible range of LPS prototypes. Let me tell you there are plenty of more prototypes to be discovered and I will continue to archive those pets as I come across them. 
If there are any corrections I need to make or any of the mystery pets eventually get confirmed as prototypes, I will be including them as addendums in my pinned comment below. And if you know a prototype that I missed, you're welcome to share them on my Discord server because I'd love to see them. I hope you all have a wonderful Saturday, Friday, Wednesday, whatever day you're watching this. And without further ado, I will leave you off with not a prototype of my mascot, but a horrifying fake. See ya! Ah!